I'm not Drew Franklin. This is not Zach Gagan. This is not Jack Pilgrim. This is a women's basketball rapid reaction. We're switching things up a little bit this time around. Kenny Brooks just had his introductory press conference here at the Joe Craft Center. We got to talk with him for about 30 minutes. He gave us some just insight on, on the process and his plans for Kentucky, what he's going to do, what he hopes to bring to the program, NIL stuff, recruiting, assistant coaches, backstories about Lefty Drizel, everything that you could think of. Uh, it was a really well done event, him next to uh, Mitch Barnhart up there on the podium. Uh, so we're going to break it down, just give our thoughts on it. I am Zach Gagan. We have Phoenix Stevens over here, Katie Hutchison over here. Both are two terrific interns with KSR who covered the entire women's basketball team last year. They won 12 games wasn't that great. A lot of optimism out of that press conference. Phoenix, I'll start with you. Just what did you think? Overall thoughts, and then I'll go to Katie and see if she has anything else to add to it. But just what do you think from his press conference? You know, did you like what, he, what you heard? Did you hate any of it? You know, what were your thoughts? You know, I think you really hit the nail on the head when you talk about the optimism. I think when you walk in, first of all, last season you head into these press conferences, there's probably 10 of us in there. Mm -hmm. Today, there might have been close to what? Do you say 50, 75 people? I think there were 100 right? people in there, absolutely. People. I mean, just the energy around women's basketball right now, and specifically Kentucky women's basketball, is great. And I think, you know, in this coaching search, you know, just like, who's the, you know, who's going to be the coach? Who's going to be? And a lot of the times, or a lot of the candidates were mid major people that you're just quite frankly unsure of. And I think with Kenny Brooks um, at Virginia Tech, I think Mitch Barnhart hits a home run, and I think you clearly saw that here in the press conference today. Katie, anything you'd like to add? Just your general thoughts on, on the first introduction of Kenny Brooks? I mean, I'm really excited about it. I think that he has a great um, energy about him, and especially giving his backstories about Lefty Drizel being a Hall of Fame coach, and he's learned basically everything from him. So to have someone like that come into the program and say you're going to be proud to be a Wildcat, it's just so encouraging about this program because it's seen so many lows recently. I'm just really excited. I feel like this is going to be a really good opportunity for us. Yes, it was definitely a very exciting press conference. Um, some of the things that stood out to me in particular, and I'll let you all kind of give your thoughts as well. Uh, we saw a couple of the players that are in the portal that were sitting out there, Nia Leveretter and Anaya Russell. Those are bo both players that are currently in the portal. Uh, they can come back if they'd like to. We did not see Maddie Shearer or Asia Petty there. That's all just me speculating and observing the room, though. So, but I did think that was interesting. I'll add Janae Walker to that list as well. Janae Walker was apparently there as well. So that's three of Kentucky's six portal players were there. So just something to keep in mind. Uh, another thing that really stood out to me was this building, actually. Memorial Coliseum, well, I guess the back end of this building. Kenny Brooks pretty much straight up said that if it weren't for the renovated memorial, he probably didn't take this job. Um, so I, I even kind of peeked in there and looked at it. It's still in progress, but they gave us some renditions of what it's going to look like. It's going to be super cool. Steven, who's behind the camera here, got to look at it as well. Uh, they're going to have a, you know, a Woodford Reserve Club. Everything is kind of packed into each other there. You've got a nice uh, giant scoreboard coming down from the top. So I thought that was very notable because that was obviously a big task for Kentucky to pull off to get a big uh, memorial upgrade like that. Uh, Curly is already paying off and the place isn't even open yet. Um, I'll go back to you, Katie. Just one thing that maybe stood out from the press conference that, you, that you'd like to talk about. Well, he talked about um, having eight or nine sold out games in their 9,000 occupancy arena. That gives me a lot of hope for what's going to come to memorial. I mean, I don't know what the max seating is in there. But. Mitch Barnhart actually, well, if I can jump here, did say that, because uh, we were able to do a little aside with him, he said it was about 6,500, 6,700 is what they were shooting for with the upgraded memorial. Yeah, just the fact that he could even fill that 9,000 person arena nine times gives me so much hope to know that he can get this community back into this sport and really fill Memorial Coliseum. It's something that we haven't seen for women's basketball in a long time, especially at Kentucky. So I'm just very excited for that. Phoenix, I'm going to go over to you now. What's give me one takeaway from this that that really stood out to you? Well, you know, it's you know a lot of coaches when they come in, they have one style of play that they kind of stick with. It's it's their identity. It's who they are, and that's not necessarily a wrong thing. Mm -hmm. That's just you know they recruit this type of person, they they bring in this type of coach or an assistant, and that's just what they build their team and their foundation on. But Kenny and the and the presser, he was saying, I'm going to adjust to what's available. You know, if we have X player here out in uh, the recruiting class, or we have you know Y player. He's going to he's going to adjust, and he's going to make the team mold around that. And I think that's really big because last season you saw you're you know you're trying to force 
a certain philosophy onto players and it didn't quite work out. The personnel just didn't quite fit. And I think this season you're going to see, okay, it doesn't matter who's on the team, we're going to make it work, just got to figure out how. Uh, a good starting point would be bringing in his six foot six, I believe she's a sophomore, Strack from Virginia Tech. Bringing her in would be nice. He also has a six foot seven native of Portugal committed to the 24 recruiting class. So that would be nice to bring some size, just to speak to that. Uh, that's something that Kentucky has been lacking over, honestly, for the last 15 years, has been someone big down low. And that's kind of what you need to succeed in the SEC, especially in women's basketball. Um, another thing, me personally, that stood out, um, I, th I thought it was interesting how he, he, going back to his lefty Drizelle conversations, he was talking about how when he was being coached by Lefty that he kind of thought he was crazy, didn't really understand his methods or anything like that um, until he became an assistant under him. And then he kind of understood, you know, like, okay, he everything had a rhyme or a reason. And I felt like a lot of that was kind of pointed at the, I guess, eight uh, group of, of K uh, Kentucky players, the three that were in the portal and the five that are still there, maybe saying, hey, like, you know, we're, you know, we're still buddy, buddy early. You might think I'm crazy, but I promise that everything kind of has a, you know, a reason. Um, so I was, I like to hear that. He was big on NIL, so that NIL is a, a high priority. Um, Kate, if you want, you can touch on that if you want, or go to a different uh, realm. I did think what his th uh, his thoughts on NIL were interesting, just because of how prominent is it's been now with with the transfer portal and such. So NIL or any other thoughts that you have? I mean, yeah, he really stressed the importance of NIL, and he also said we're going to need a lot of people's help. And so I think one of the biggest focuses for him in the off season is getting the community and, and maybe more boosters and things to put some money into the program that he can then use to better the players and just better the program as a whole. And, you know, he just kept saying like NIL is so important. He said that over and over and over again. And so I think we will be seeing a lot of that and I feel like he's going to do a lot of good with it. The best place to start using it would probably be with a pair of five-star recruits, uh, juniors now in the state of Kentucky, Zakai Johnson and Leah Macy. I'm sure plenty of you have heard their names before. Not necessarily main Kentucky targets over the last two years under Kyra Elsey. He was kind of alluded or asked to that question, alluded to those two players, basically saying that, look, if they are fit what we're going for, we're going to go after them. Uh, you know, new coach, new facility, new juice in the program. Maybe that can help, and especially if you've got a little bit more NIL uh, money to throw their way. So we'll see how things turn out there. Uh, Phoenix, we'll kind of wind down here. Any other thoughts that you've got from uh, from what you saw from Kenny today? You know, I think we're really going to kind of dive into the X's and O's more this summer, getting closer to the season. But I think today's more of an overarching picture kind of day. It's It's just... Again, you walk in there and the energy, the feeling, the aura in that building is just it was so different. And, you know, I was around the team a lot, you know, pre, I mean, they're coming into the games last season. I'd be there two hours early and I'd just hang around the team just to kind of get a feel because I feel like, well, if I'm going to cover the team, I might as well know them. Grinder. And you could, you could just feel how down things were at times. And I know, I know, I mean, I know it's literally just the introduction day, but you head in there and it's just, you can tell something special is is in the works. You can tell that something's about to happen. And I think, uh, you know, if you're looking to get into something else here, if you're a member of the Big Blue Nation and you're unsure about what's going on in the rest of UK athletics, I think you can be pretty damn sure about UK women's basketball right now. Yes, the vibes are definitely at an all-time high right, right now, especially after back-to-back -back losing seasons. So it was nice to see just the just everyone being energetic. Mitch had a smile on his face the whole time. Kenny Brooks is a very... Just approachable guy, it seems. He seems very funny, lighthearted, uh, like he's going to be a very good players coach, too. Uh, talked a lot about his development with other players and how he's got like seven WNBA draft picks, eight or something like that, uh, in his time as head coach over the years, uh, including his stops at James Madison. If you can get a player from James Madison to go to the WNBA, probably means you're doing something right. So, vibes are high. We'll kind of wait and see how things play out with the roster building, because that's going to be the next big stage here, is how does Kentucky fill out this roster? Because currently they just have five players on the roster, plus two incoming commits. Like I said, we had a couple of transfer portal girls that were still there, so we'll see how things go. But uh, any other closing thoughts before we get out of here? Katie, do you have anything? Phoenix, anything that you'd like to add to this uh, introduction here? You know, I'm personally, I'm actually really excited to see what he does on the recruiting trail. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, at Virginia Tech, you saw it, master recruiter. Yes. I mean, not just in state in Virginia, but literally, I mean, all over, all over the world, literally, because yeah, Portugal, Portugal, yeah. So you know, at Kentucky last season, we saw players that, no offense to any of them, some of them, you're like, do they really belong here in the SEC? And I think we're actually going to see some really nice SEC caliber players here, and I think it's going to help us carry into March and you know maybe even one day April. 
April. Look at that. He did take Virginia Tech to their first and only ever Final Four. Perhaps we'll see that soon at Kentucky. For KSR signing off here, Zach Gagan, Katie Hutchison, Phoenix Stevens, in front of uh, Joe Craft slash Renovated Memorial. We're signing off. We'll talk to you soon.